Welcome to the video on equilibrium. In this video, we're going to work out what equilibrium is, and we're going to knuckle down into this thing called an equilibrium constant, which is the number that tells us about it. So first, let's start by looking at a reaction. If we have some sulfur dioxide here, some SO2, mixing with some oxygen, that's going to give us sulfur trioxide. That's a reaction. Hopefully we're familiar with these. But what can actually happen sometimes is that some of the product that's been created here will actually turn back into reactants. So instead of just these things joining together to make a product, the product will break apart to make reactants. And this goes backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And while at the beginning of the reaction you only have reactants, so there's going to be lots more products made. But after a while, this balances out. So there'll be the same number of reactants turning into products as there is products turning back into reactants. And therefore we call it at a state of dynamic equilibrium. So if you counted the number of molecules that were actually reactants and products, it would stay the same even though there's constant change going on. And we denote this when we write an equation as two half arrows, some going forward, some going back. And that tells the marker we know it's a dynamic equilibrium equation. The second thing you need to know before we get started into numbers is the unit of a mole. A mole is how we count the number of molecules or the number of atoms. A mole means that there's six with 23 zeros atoms in one of these moles. So it's just a way for us to count big volumes of atoms all together. So when we talk about number of atoms, we'll talk about number of moles, just because there's too many individual atoms or molecules for us to count by themselves. And also when we talk about concentration, so, so how many molecules in a small amount of space, we'll talk about the number of moles per liter. And you'll notice in this equation, we've got two SO2, that means two moles of SO2. We've got nothing in front of the oxygen, which means one. And we've got two in front of the sulfur trioxide, which means two moles of SO3. So they're the numbers we need to know before we start. And we need to know the phrase dynamic equilibrium, which is the stage where the number of reactants turning into products is the same as the number of products turning into reactants. And sometimes there'll be more reactants left over at this point, and sometimes there'll be more products. We'll look at that next. All of these factors are tied up in a number which is called the equilibrium constant. Now this is a number which is specific for each equation and it can change depending on the temperature. What it means is the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. So if we were to look at a certain equation, like we've been looking at, and we got given a Kc, which is an equilibrium constant, a number of 0.01, that would mean there are more reactants. If the number is less than one, it means there are more reactants than there will be products when we reach this state of equilibrium. If, however, the number Kc, this equilibrium constant, is more than one, like in this case it's 500, then it means there's gonna be more products than reactants. So these have two names. The first name, if there's more reactants, it's a backwards reaction because there's going to be more of these products turning back into reactants than there will be reactants turning into products. Whereas if we have it the right way around with number of reactants turning into more products, this is called a Ford's reaction. And if we had a Kc, an equilibrium constant of around one, that would mean there's about the same number of products as reactants. But in this case, you'll see that it's 1.01, so there's slightly more products, so technically we could say it's a Ford's reaction. Number one is the cutoff point for Kc. So we're going to do some calculations, but before we do, we're going to look at how you calculate it, and you need to look at the number of moles. So in this case, for example, we look at the concentration of the products, which is the concentration of SO3. But because we have two moles of SO3, which we can see from our equation, we have to put that number of moles as a power of our products. We'll see how we do this next in an example. Finally, do not include water or any solids in your equilibrium constant calculations that we look at. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. So just completely ignore them for the sake of any of these calculations. Let's look at an example now. Here's our reaction of 2SO2 plus oxygen goes to 2SO3. It's a gas. So for this equilibrium, at this temperature, we get an equilibrium constant, a number. And as you'll see, it's more than one, quite a lot more than one, so there's going to be more products than there will be reactants. That's something we could know. A question might be, write the equilibrium expression for this reaction. And this is where we bring out our equilibrium constant. 
Remember, we have the concentration of products, and we write that, just we write the product, whatever's been produced, in square brackets, that means concentration, and then we put it to the power of the number of moles. So here we had two SO3, so we put it to the power of two. Then we divide it by our reactants. Now we have two reactants, so we're gonna put it in two lots of square brackets. You'll multiply them together next. We have SO2, and there's two moles of that, so we have it to the power of two. And there's O2, and there's only one mole of that, so we don't need to put a power on that one. And this is our answer. That's the expression for the equilibrium constant, or the equilibrium expression for the reaction. Products over reactants. Now let's look at part B. The following three gases are mixed in a one liter container. So we have this number of SO2, this number of O2, and this number of SO3. And remember, moles is just the number of molecules. We can sub in these numbers into our equation. So for SO3, we got told there's 0.7 moles, so we put in 0.7 here, and we leave the squared. We divide that by the concentration of SO2, which is 0.5, so we just put that in, and O2, which is 0.1, so we just put that in instead of O2 here. Then we can put all of this into our calculator and get a final equilibrium constant of 19.6. And what that number tells us is that the reaction is still early on. There's going to be a lot more products produced once the reaction is in a state of dynamic equilibrium. It's going to get up to 280. So we've still got some ways to go. So our answer could be this equation plus saying that this value that we've got, 19.6, is less than the 280. This means that there are still more reactants left to turn into products at this stage of the reactant. Actually, there are more products already, but more reactants are going to turn into them to get up to this 280. So this means that the equilibrium will move in the forward direction to produce more SO3, more products, and hence allow the mixture to reach its dynamic equilibrium. So this value is going to approach 280 as time goes on. Okay, so here's what you need to know from all of this. The first is that we can get an expression for the equilibrium constant. I've used letters here rather than words, so I hope it still makes sense. But C and D are just are any kind of products you might get. So we're going to have the products at the top divided by the reactants A and B to get our equilibrium constant. And remember, if you have a certain number of moles, as shown by the little A, B, C, or D, you're going to put them as powers when you're writing your equilibrium expression. So that's how you're going to calculate this number here, equilibrium constant. Now, if this number here is above one, there's going to be more products produced. If this number is below one, there's going to be more reactants ultimately at the end of the equation. And if there's more products produced, it's going to be called a forwards reaction because it'll go forwards. If there's more reactants at the end, it's called a backwards reaction. And we can use this KC here to actually calculate certain concentrations or calculate a real number for this equilibrium constant. So let's look at another question now with multiple parts. Phosphorus pentachloride, which is PCl5, is a gas, and it decomposes to form phosphorus trichloride, which is PCl3, and chlorine gas. So we've got an equation here to represent that. What we need to do is complete the equilibrium constant expression. So hopefully we know how to do this for the reaction. So remember, Kc is products divided by reactants. So here we've got two products, the PCl3, and the Cl2, so we put them on the top, and remember we put them in square brackets because that means concentration. And we divide it by our reactants, the concentration of PCl5, our only reactant here. Great, that's our answer. So for the next part, the table shows the value of the equilibrium constant at two different temperatures. So at 200 degrees Celsius, it's eight times 10 to the minus three. That means it's a really small number if you see to the power of minus three. So there's going to be a lot more reactants than products. And then at 350 degrees, it's 0.612. That means there's still going to be more reactants because it's less than one, but not quite as much as at a colder temperature. So it says, circle the species that will be the highest concentration. So we know it's a backwards reaction, so there's going to be more reactants. So that means more PCl5. If this was a number greater than one, there'd be more PCl3 and chlorine gas. If we wanted to explain our answer, we just say, because Kc is below one, the reaction's backwards. Therefore, there's more reactants than products at this stage. For the final part of the question, we need to calculate the concentration of PCl5. That's at 350 degrees Celsius. 
If the concentrations of PCl3 and Cl2 are given to us here, we can put it into our expression and actually calculate an answer. So let's do that on this page. Here we've got our equilibrium expression from an earlier question. We know that Kc at this stage at 350 degrees Celsius is 0.612. So instead of Kc, we can just write 0.612. We also are told that the concentrations of PCl3 and Cl2 are both 0.352. So again, instead of concentration of PCl2, we can plug in 0.352. And that's going to be divided by the concentration of PCl5, which we don't know yet, that's what we're trying to calculate. Now we're going to need to use algebra to rearrange this equation. If you rearrange it to get PCl5 equals, you're going to be left with this 0.352 multiplied by the 0.352 divided by this equilibrium constant of 0.612. If you put that all into your calculator, you're going to get a concentration for PCL5 of 0.202 moles per liter. And this is your final answer. So in this video, we've covered everything right from knowing what dynamic equilibrium actually is through to understanding what the number of equilibrium constant means and actually used our equilibrium expression to calculate concentrations and calculate the equilibrium constant. So I hope you have a better understanding of equilibrium.